Is it possible to beat a game in zero seconds? And if you do, did you even really play the game? Well, it's up for debate, I guess. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. And just a week or so ago, uh, one of my Friday Plays videos I did, we talked about Superman for the Atari 2600. And in the comments of that video, uh, many, many, many of you watched and commented, thank you for that. Uh, many of you are reminded me of a couple of things. First, you reminded me that Superman, in addition to being the first superhero licensed game for the Atari 2600, was also the first game to feature a pause function using the game's select switch. You can pause the action to take a break and you know go to the bathroom or do your chores or whatever you had to do as a kid. Uh, and you further went on to remind me that using that pause function, you can kind of cheat and finish the game without doing all the tasks. And I had several of you mention I used to do that as a kid and I could get it in about five or six seconds and finish the game in that much time. All of that reminded me of my experimentation as a kid. Look, when you have your Atari, when you're 10 or 12 years old, you have infinite free time and infinite creativity to tinker with and find a way. And it reminded me that I had found a way to beat Superman in zero seconds, meaning zero time on the clock. It takes time in the real world, but if you can finish the game with zero seconds on the clock, then effectively you've beat it in zero seconds. So. In this video, I want to show you how that pause works, how you can exploit it and kind of break the Superman game and play with the game once you're done playing the game. Uh, yeah, so let's fire up Superman and I'll show you what I mean. Here's Superman back up and running, and I'm going to assume that you know how to play the game. If not, you can watch the video that I did just last week on what the goal of the game is. But very briefly, I'll remind you. The, the, the way you play the game is you are, you start the game, you become Clark Kent, you go watch the bridge get blown up, you become Superman, put six guys in jail, rebuild the bridge, turn back into Clark Kent, and then return to the Daily Planet. So let's move then, remember that, keep that in mind. So let's move then to the pause function. So I have the game running right now, and it's uh, 18, 19 seconds. By pushing the game select, you go into pause. So... Here's its pause, the timer stops, and then it goes into like this screensaver mode, and it just starts touring the city. And there's the bridge scene, and then there's uh, the double buildings with the, the subway entrance, and it just goes through that until you start to move, ooh, and it comes right back to where you were, and you continue the game. If you utilize that technique, so let's start the game, there's also a little glitch. If you will come and stand right here, just outside of the um, phone booth, and then go into pause, the first cycle will jump your little guy up to the level of the bridge, which he did, and the next one will put you on the subway. And if while you're touching the subway you move, <gasps> there's a glitch. You're now actually in the subway. You're in a part of the world where you're not supposed to be at this point in the game. So, for example, uh, look, so now I can just walk the city as Clark Kent. I have my x-ray vision, and I can walk around. Look, I'm, you're never supposed to do this. I can't fly, of course. I haven't played the game. The bridge hasn't even blown up yet. I can just wander the city. There's the Daily Planet. Da, da, da. Yeah, I just take a tour of the city. Now, the bridge has not yet blown up. So if we go, look here, in the blue subway, there are the pieces of the bridge. They're sitting waiting to be repositioned once the bridge animation happens. Now, you can't do anything with them because you're not Superman, uh, but they're here. Now, here's the other cool thing. If <laughs> if you now go to the screen where the bridge is, watch what happens. As soon as I step foot in the screen, it teleports me where I'm supposed to be, the bridge blows up, and you can then continue the game. Here's the other part of that. I'm going to start the game again, pause, brand new game, zero seconds on the clock. I've not done anything. Let's use the trick to get inside of the subway. Now, west of this yellow subway, that's the Daily Planet. So I can walk over there and finish the game. Now, I want you to observe that when you finish the game, what happens? It's almost exactly like being in pause. The clock stops running, and you take a tour of the city. So pause and game over conditions are very similar. They're kind of the same routine. So we're going to do this again. So drop down to the uh, phone booth. I'm going to hit pause. And we're going to do the subway trick. So wait till we get to the third screen. Boom. And we move and we're in the subway. And now I can walk right over and finish the game. What I want you to observe is it takes about a second when you finish the game 
for the bong, bong, bong to chime. So it'll cost me an extra second just to hear the music. So watch. We'll go in at 25. Two, three, four, 25. It cost us a second just to hear the music. Now we're getting closer. So what's commonly done is using pause to get done in about five seconds. So start the game again. I'm going to drop it in the phone booth. Step out. Hit pause. Now we're just waiting for this to jump to the bridge level. Then we're waiting for it to get to the subway. And then we can start moving. And we're going to walk left. Two, three, four. But it costs us one more second to get to the end of the game. Five seconds is the theoretical limit. But here we go. One more trick. Here we go. Remember what I said, though, about how pause works. It first stops the clock and then starts that city tour. The interesting thing that I've learned is that, actually, when I was a kid, I learned is that when you use the pause, it does stop the clock, but it also resets the uh, counter up to one second, meaning if you're at almost one second, it resets to zero. So every time you hit stop, it starts counting that first second again. So I'm going to start the game over, drop to the phone booth. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause just to make sure that it doesn't count anything. Step outside. Pause. I'm paused again. It's going to start the city tour. I'm going to take a step into the subway. But what I do, I'm going to hit pause again. Take a little step. Hit pause. Yeah? Take a little step. Hit pause. Zero seconds on the clock still. Step. Pause. Step. Pause. I'm going to give it a full second each time I pause. Just to make sure that I don't jump the gun here. Yeah? Still zero seconds. I still have not clocked any seconds yet. But remember, when I walk into the Daily Planet, it costs me a second to get the ding, ding, ding noise. Right? We're getting there. We're getting there. Still zero. Uh, it cost me, cost me two seconds just to hear the ding, ding music. Now we have every, all the information that we need. We know how to keep the clock from counting, but there's one more bonus. Because of how the pause works, we can pause before the ding, ding, ding music starts. So if I didn't warn you before, I'm warning you now. This is such a nerdy exploit. <laughs> okay, here we go. Basically the same thing, except we're going to keep using the pause in between steps to make sure the millisecond timer resets and we never get any time on the clock up until we get to the Daily Planet. So reset. Mm -hmm. Zero. Good. Good. There's the subway. I'm in the subway. Tiny steps. And every step, I pause. Keep pausing. Step pause, step pause. Just keep making sure you don't tally up enough milliseconds or that it resets that you get any time off or credited toward you. Here's the Daily Planet. We're getting there. Now we just look like some dork standing still in the middle of the street, taking it one step every <laughs> few seconds. <laughs> I don't know what kind of video this is going to be. It probably is super boring, but I find it super interesting. You're probably not going to win friends and influence people with this skill, but, well, unless I'm the person you're trying to win as a friend, and then <laughs> I just think it's fun. Almost there. And they're looking out the window. Clark, are you coming in? What are you doing out there? Aren't you coming into work? Okay, we're right outside the door. Normally, we'd be at about four or five seconds here, and it would cost us a second when we stepped inside of the Daily Planet. But instead, as soon as we step inside, we're going to hit pause again and stop that timer. Here we go. Zero. Zero seconds. <laughs> so effectively, what normally would take... Let, so let, let's start the game normally. If I just start the game and I run over here, watch the bridge get blown up and become Superman, it takes me seven seconds just to start the game, and we just completed the game by using pause, cheating through the subway, overusing pause, zero seconds. Well, there you go. Now you too can complete the Atari 2600 Superman with zero seconds on the clock. And 
I guess we can all share in the world record. I mean, you can't get negative seconds, so we're all gonna win together using this. Is it cheating? It's in the game, we're not breaking the game, I don't know. You be the judge. Anyway, it's fun to do. Look, I love digging in deep on these old Atari games and playing not only the games, but exploring the little nuances and quirks of them. It was just part of the charm. Please continue to give me suggestions for games you'd like to see get this Friday Plays treatment. Uh, I'm obviously gonna throw some links over my shoulders here and here to the previous ones that I've done. Hope you found something to enjoy in this game-breaking video. I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.